to you guys about a software I'm working on for visualizing and analyzing data in the cloud. For those of you on your computers, um, go ahead and you can go to that website and play with some of the features of the software while I'm talking about it. Or for those of you at home who didn't want to make the trip up here in the fog and snow. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about how we typically work with data as scientists. Usually there's a lot of data out there sitting in the cloud in these data servers and the way we interact with that is downloading it. If you think of the cloud as an actual cloud, it's kind of like a very tremendous thunderstorm precipitating gigabytes, terabytes, megabytes of data all at you at the same time. Um, for some applications, it's great. Others, it's not so efficient. The benefit of doing a cloud-based solution like my software or other GIST-based solutions is that instead of it does a lot of that work behind the scenes. And so to the user, all you're really getting rained on pretty much are um, image files that have already been generated. And so your file size transfer is only very small. This is, of course, useful in situations where bandwidth is a precious commodity, like field campaigns, conferences, where you're sharing Wi-Fi with 17,000 other people, um, or outreach or international collaboration efforts. So let's take a look at what my software can actually do, starting with a, a very specific, very basic event. Um, we're just going to look at um, different seasons in different parts of the globe. Um, here's a pl temperature plot of uh, northern hemisphere winter um, service temperatures for the month of January. Um, if we were to go in, we can actually do some dynamic overlays. So let's you know, do a, sub a simple subtraction of summer versus winter for northern hemisphere. We'll do that now. Um, this is all done in real time. It's not done ahead of time or pre-process at all. And so if you can well, you think, of, think of any sort of difference you want to look at, you can visualize it here all in the cloud. Um, so of course we know that you know it's warmer in the summer in northern hemisphere and colder in the in the, the well southern hemisphere winter. So we'll overlay on top of that the solar radiation. Um, this is just uh, downward solar flux. Um, you can see that there's some you know correlation there where you know where the solar flux is positive or positive or warmer or more abundant during the, the July, it's warmer and vice versa. Um, in order to look at some more in detail, we're going to actually use some interactive tools. Um, these tools are in addition to the basic plotting features. They usually manifest as uh, simple elements like markers, lines, and boxes. Now I'm just going to do a simple uh, zonal mean overlay of the entire hemisphere, looking at the differences between July and January. Um, you can see that it, the curves kind of line up a little bit, but there is some definite differences here, especially in the southern, southern hemisphere, is because, of course, of all the oceans and all the activity down there. Uh, once you create a figure like this, it's actually, um, you can bring it up as many times as you want. It's all summarized in the left bar there. And so we'll create another figure. So this is a vertical profile of the same, uh, of the same element. Um, and if you can go back and forth, whatever, there's a lot of different types of visualizations you can do all within the same dynamic interface. At the same time, we were looking at model data. We can also do more, say, uh, observational data that might not be continuous. Here's an example of, of such. It's the same plot, but with um, oceanic um, ship data from the ICOS database. Um, you can see here that uh, it's not necessarily continuous, but it still gets the point across. Um, or we can do some more complex things, like looking at other planets, for instance. Here's an example of the same overlay, but for Mars. It obviously looks a lot different than it does on Earth with a thin atmosphere. It looks um, the, the, the temporal variations are more dominated by a diurnal cycle rather than a seasonal cycle like they are here. Um, we're even looking at other model outputs, say, we'll say we're just in regional model. This is just an example of WARF output over the Middle East, for instance. Um, or if you really want to get really high resolution, it's also potentially possible. Um, the next slide is going to show um, the HER, the high resolution rapid ref refresh. Um, over the front range, just showing the temperature, temperature field, you can see that um, all the different um, minute features of the data overlay on top of the satellite imagery in order to really see where uh, things are colder or warmer over the course of, a, of an evening. Um, and because everything is done in real time as opposed to ahead of time, it's actually a very powerful tool for model under comparison. You don't have to individual create files for each model. This is an example of just a random CFS climate forecast system run versus the reanalysis data. Um, you can easily visualize differences between two models without having to do anything ahead of time. Um, the idea of the software is to put it in a format that is useful for the users in their context. So language localization is something that I'm working on um, a lot these days. Here's the entire interface in Spanish. Um, also, too, looking at um, cross-platform development, and I'm a second ahead of myself. <laughs> um, the idea is to be able to pull up the same imagery, whether you're looking on a cell phone or whether you're looking at um, a desktop computer. Um, the, the developers, of course, haven't been left hanging. Um, there's also a lot of flexibility. Um, ahead of myself again. <laughs> A lot of flexibility in the, in the APIs you work with. Here's an example using open layers as the mapping interface as opposed to Google Maps. Um, and there's also an effort to produce in multiple data languages as well. Um, despite all these features, actually, the software is not very heavy. It's actually pretty lightweight and I had myself again. Um, <laughs> easy to deploy. All it requires is a simple LAMP stack, very standard, and the grads application. Actually, for those of you who were playing with the website while I was talking about it, it wasn't actually running on a data server. It was actually running on one of these guys here, Raspberry Pi. So it really does not take much computing power to be able to put something like this together. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for your attention. Um, here's a full project you can play with that have the full set of features for very specific topics. Thank you.